What's going on everybody? In this video, I'm going to walk you step by step through the process of doing a reflash or reprogramming on a Nissan vehicle. Uh, Nissan's a little bit more complicated than some of the other manufacturers out there. Uh, so I'm going to take you step by step and show you uh, exactly the steps you need to take in order to do the reflash on those vehicles. Now to start off, we need to go over to the Nissan manufacturer's website. Uh, their website is nissan-techinfo.com, but if you don't already know, uh, if you don't know that, uh, you don't know where to find that, you can go to this oemonestop.com. A uh, very good website where it gives you access and to, uh, links rather to all of the different manufacturers uh, in the market. So you're going to go into here, you can click on Nissan, and then for this we're going to be clicking on the mechanical. It'll take you right to nissan-techinfo.com, and this is their main uh, technician's website. <clears throat> so you're going to click on your country here, in my case I'm North America, so we're going to click here. And then at the bottom you can see the account login area down at the bottom here. And if you already have an account, you're going to just type in your user ID and your password and <clears throat> log right in. If you don't have an account, then you will need to uh, do the register first at the bottom. So really quick, before we jump into the signing in process and everything, uh, there's a few things on the website I want to point out while I've got the website up because uh, things with their website can get a little bit confusing. Uh, there's a lot of different things on here that you can see. Um, all of this stays the same once you're already logged in. In my case, I'm not logged in yet. Um, First thing I want to do is go to the Consult 2, Consult 3 Plus, and the ECU Blank Programming and ECU Reprogramming tab. Uh, and I'm going to show you a little bit about this because this is where you're going to spend most of your time on the website. So once you click on that, it brings you to this page here. And uh, the process from here is going to vary depending on what equipment you're using. So uh, in my case, I'm going to be using a generic J2534 device from uh, Drew Technologies, the Cardac 3. If you have the Consult 3, which is Nissan's factory scan tool, uh, then you'll need to do stuff uh, that you see here for the Consult 3. Now, there's two different or different sections up here. Uh, they also have a section for the Consult 2, which most people probably aren't using anymore. Um, there is the reprogramming, and then there is the Consult 3 Plus blank. This is if you are trying to program a brand new, completely blank ECU that you bought from the dealer. You'll need to follow some processes here. Uh, if you're trying to reprogram, reprogram one that is already installed in the vehicle, if you're trying to do a use module or something like that, then you'll need to be under this tab here. Um, the enter five digits of your ECU part number is pretty self-explanatory. You're just going to enter some digits. It'll pop up and I'm just entering random digits here and then it'll give you the last five and again you'll enter some in there, whatever your last five are and it will give you a file that you'll need to purchase um, to do your reprogramming. So with Nissan you will need to pay for the subscription to use their website but you will also need to pay uh, for the file to do your calibration in most cases. Now in the case I'm about to show you of me doing this I do not have to actually um, pay for a file. Uh, this I don't have to do any of this. So at the bottom here you can see there is this note about obtaining a fast linked file and this email address. If you have a fast system uh, based module that is one of their older modules and uh, for those you do not need to actually purchase the file, the uh, reprogramming file from Nissan. They will send you those. Um, in my case I end up having to do this and it, they, you just send them an email. You send an email right here with the VIN number of the vehicle and the ECU part number and then they email you back with the file that you need to do your calibrations. <laughs> now if you're wondering if the module that you're going to be doing is uses this fast linked system or if it uses this current system, uh, in your service info it'll tell you to go into the fast catalog on the website to get your file. If it mentions the fast catalog then you'll have to email them to get that file sent to you. Very easy process. They do it fairly quick. Um, it can take a day or so. And I, When I did mine I happened to do it later in the day and the next morning I had the email sent to me. Uh, so not a big deal there. Now going back to the uh, home page, there's a couple other things listed here. So the uh, next thing I want to look at is the diagnostic software. 
So this page here is where you're going to download the software that you need for your setup. So there's different tabs here. There's Consult 3 Plus, the Plus R2R, the Consult 3, the Consult 2, and the GTR. Uh, the GTR page is only used if you're reprogramming on a GTR. Um, if you're doing that, you'll need to use this and read all this information. Most of us probably aren't doing that. If you're watching this, you're probably not programming GTR, uh, so we're going to ignore that. The two that you really need to pay attention to are the Consult 3 Plus and the Consult 3 Plus R2R tabs. Now the main difference between these two things, uh, the Consult 3 Plus, you're required to use uh, the Nissan vehicle interface. So if you don't have the Nissan factory tool, this is not what you're going to be using. In this case, in this video, I'm going to be using the Consult 3 Plus R2R, which is essentially the same thing, only it's designed to work with J2534 devices. Um, and you'll need to go in and purchase the subscription that you want to do. Um, I chose the one day description or subscription. Uh, you'll notice that there's two one days, two 30 days, and two one year subscriptions. Uh, make sure you click the correct one. One of them includes the GTR software. Uh, one of them, the cheaper one, does not. So if you're not doing a, if you're not programming a GTR, you could buy the cheaper of the two options. Um, in most cases, you're going to buy the one day. If you have a lot of Nissans to do or you plan on programming a lot of Nissans right off the bat, you might do a 30-day. Some shops like to buy the one-year subscription so they don't have to go through this process every time they have one. Uh, but for most of the time, you're going to be using this one-day subscription right at the top right here. Now under system requirements right here, they do list J2534, the Cardac Plus 3 as their system requirements. Um, according to that other page, they do support other um, other J2534 devices. Uh, the Plus 3 is the only one that I have personally used with this, but um, just keep in mind on the uh, last couple pages there, they did show other uh, other software or other J25 devices uh, being supported there. So that's probably not the only one that'll work. And you'll want to go to the uh, minimum system requirements here and just make sure that your computer uh, will work for their system, which in most cases it should work. Now to kick off the actual reflashing process, first off you need to purchase and download the diagnostic software. So from the home page, click on the diagnostic software tab after you're logged in. And then from here, you're going to choose the Consult 3 Plus R2R tab. That is the tab that you use for the J2534 devices. You'll use the Consult 3 Plus tab if you're using an annual subscription and the Consult 3 tool. And then simply choose the subscription that works for you. In this case, I'm going to be using the one-day $30 subscription. And go ahead and click whatever one works for you in this situation. And then simply follow the process to do the uh, checkout process and follow that process all the way through. Now once you're done with the checkout, you will get this page here. If you haven't already downloaded the software, you can click the Consult 3 Plus R2R software download uh, right at the towards the bottom of the screen there. You can click that. Um, the other option you have is to go back to the home screen and we'll uh, download it from there as well in case you click past this without realizing or something like that. You can always go back to the home screen as I'll show you right here and you can download it there. So from the home screen, if you need to download it, you're going to scroll all the way to the bottom. You're going to click the My Available Downloads tab, and then you'll see that the download will be available on the side right there. And you can click that and go ahead and download it. Now once you get the software downloaded and booted up, this is what you should see or something similar to this. Um, the program itself, when it does load up, is in a little bit finicky and sometimes parts of the screen will be blocked. In my case, I had to go into my computer settings and actually turn off the, the software. Windows taskbar at the bottom of the screen, screen it. because it covered up a good chunk of the software. Uh, so just keep in nice mind when you're playing visible. with it, some computer settings to get everything to be nice and visible. Now the very first thing we need to do here is fix the connection status where it says there's no connection. So at this point you need to hook up uh, your J2534 tool to the car, have your uh, battery charger um, set to programming mode and hooked up, 
and for whatever reason my screen capture did not capture it when I did this but all you need to do is click the button that says select VI slash MI you'll click that you'll follow the pop-up links and just choose your J2534 tool that you have hooked to the car and then it'll pop up and connect to the vehicle for you once you get your tool chosen, you'll see the connection status change. Your tool will be listed there and some new options will be highlighted on the diagnose menu side. Uh, from here, if you want to pull the codes and things like that before you do anything, you can click the diagnose all systems or one system, pull all or some of the codes. Uh, we're going to jump right in and hit the reprogramming and configuration option. So this screen here, you just need to read through your precautions, click the confirmed instructions button at the bottom, and then click on the next button to get to the next screen. Now from here, you just simply hit the detect vehicle button, and the software will go in and pull the VIN from the vehicle. If for whatever reason it's not able to pull the VIN out of the vehicle, you'll have to manually enter it. Uh, but typically, unless you're you know replacing the uh, ECU or something, the engine control module rather, um, it will pull the VIN automatically for you and you don't need to worry about the rest of the process. Now once it detects the vehicle it may bring up a pop-up box where you need to uh, confirm an option or two. In my case it doesn't show it here but it did ask me to confirm uh, whether or not I was working on a Nissan Rogue or another car. Um, so you might have to do that. Uh, my screen capture just did not catch it in this but just go through that and confirm the vehicle. Make sure it's all right. Uh, and make sure the VIN is correct and everything like that before you proceed to the next step. Next it's going to make you uh, just confirm that the VIN is correct and you may it should auto populate it but you may have to enter it and then you'll get to choose the module uh, that you want to reflash. Now I'm going to click the arrow at the bottom to move over and then I'm going to choose the airbag module as that's the module that I'm reprogramming in this case in there you can pull the reflash information is with the old module still in there you can pull the reflash information and then I'm going to go to click the after ECU replacement and then I'm going to go to click the after ECU replacement and then I'm going to click the EPC linked option. Now earlier in the video emailing them uh, depending on the system you worked and on website or emailing them uh, depending on the system you worked and this is where you're going to enter in that file. So you click the file selection tab and then you choose the file that you downloaded or was given to you from Nissan that you either purchased or had emailed to you. You click that file wherever you saved it. You ideally want to save it on your desktop so it's easy to find and then the system will automatically input it there for you. Once you've chosen your file, just go ahead and click next. <clears throat> and then this screen is just asking you to uh, confirm basically what you're trying to do. Go ahead, click OK to move on to the next step. After you've hit OK, and the process will go through and write the configuration. There's a pop-up that pops up that I didn't, my screen capture didn't get there. And then it'll tell you this screen here, which just says the right configuration has been successfully completed. You can go ahead and click the end button, and that'll take you back to the home screen. Uh, from here, I like to go to the diagnosis of all systems and just check and clear all of the codes. And again, to do that, you'll need to do the redetect the vehicle. Uh, I like to check all the modules, clear all the codes, make sure everything is good to go. But guys, that is pretty much all there is to it with uh, reflashing on Nissans. It's a little bit more confusing than some other manufacturers when it comes to uh, getting your hands on the flash file. Uh, the software will not pull the flash file for you. You have to go to Nissan and actually purchase it or email them and have them send it to you. Uh, so that's a little bit complicated and it can get a little bit confusing there. Other than that, it's pretty much just to follow the procedure as you go. Uh, I hope this video was helpful for, helpful for you and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. And just in case you're wondering, I did clear all these codes out and started up the vehicle, let it run, all of that stuff, and then rechecked for the codes and had no codes come back. Everything was all good there. I just didn't show it before I ended the outro.